Aloha, everybody. Hope everybody is continuing to stay and be well. Uh, I'm here with old Herman the Hermit Crab, so I don't uh, go completely insane in this room all by myself. Um, not bad, you know. I'm uh, comforted and, you know, held in good spirits by small ruminant science. Of course, always, right? Okay, so a couple of house cleanings. Um, we'll go ahead next week and do an in-person Zoom um, uh, check-in. Or a live, not an in-person call, but a live check-in via Zoom. Um, next lab period. Um, just check in with everybody and see how everything was going um, as we develop here. Um, so I'm gonna try and keep these videos fairly short. There might be more than one video per topic, right? But I try and break them up a little bit so it's, you don't just have to sit down to a 20 minute video, okay? So this one is regarding the vaccine slide that is up on Lao Lima. I will put discussion forums up on Lao Lima um, for all these videos, okay? Um, also, my apologies for this not coming out yesterday. It's been a little transition-y time, right? And so these won't, I'll send out notifications on all the videos, but I doubt that the videos will come out right, you know, on at class time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, for instance, okay? So all of this, it'll all be available. Um, I appreciate your patience as I figure out my videoing um, technology and all that. Um, but uh, but we'll be up. We're up and going now. Okay. So uh, this first one, we just want to talk about vaccines for a second. Okay. Um, generally, the main vac main vaccine that we're dealing with uh, that with with sheep and goats mainly CDT or Clostridium C and D and tetanus. Okay. It's two different kinds of um, Clostridium. One is entero enterotoxic bacteria, right? And then, and tetanus, okay? Other things um, can, other things can be vaccine against chlamydia, um, a few other things, but this is mainly the one we're um, talking about with goat and sheep. And then with any vaccine, we really wanna practice some safe handling procedures, okay? I know this is backwards, but it's just meant as a guide, so I have something to, to, to talk to, talk about, right, while, while you are there on your computer at home or wherever you may be following on the slides. Okay, so there's more of a companion video to these um, slides. Wait, all of you refrigerated and kept out of the sun. Um, okay, the sun can break down the active components and just like with any uh, biological uh, uh, entity, right? We're going to want to keep it refrigerated to really for the shelf life. Uh, shake the bottle for a good homogenization before using. Make sure a lot of times we're sitting around for a lot and get some build up on the bottom. It's no problem to shake it up, right? And then we're going to talk about how to keep needles, but don't use the injection needle that's in the vaccine bottle. Let's talk more about that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, so when you get a vaccine, okay, you're gonna want one needle to withdraw from the bottle, okay? You only want one needle ever getting into that one bottle, okay? And then from that needle, you can then transfer to your needles that you'll be doing your injections with, okay? So leave that needle just that Ex that that uh, uh, collector needle, right? Just in the bottle, in the in the fridge. You can leave it stuck in there. Uh, you can make a little kit also to just have it be in there and have it be the designated withdrawing needle. Okay. Uh, and put an injection needle on the syringe after you uh, after you spill it, right? So extractor and then injector. 
20 gauge needle, we'll talk about some gauges for needles. The 20 gauge um, needles are smaller ones, just like with a shotgun, right? The uh, higher number is a smaller uh, circumference, okay? So 20 gauge are our smaller needles. I wanna use those with lambs. Uh, depending on the viscosity of some um, injections, uh, that's not always totally possible because some of them are very viscous and very thick. Okay, so a 20 gauge needle can be actually kind of tricky to get it through there. But most times it's fine. Um, 18 gauge are medium sized needles that you can generally use and use. And if you're in a pinch, sorry to say, you can use uh, for all of them. But it's nice to have a smaller gauge needle for the lamps. Great, so here we have, again, like I said, going from a higher gauge, of, which is a lower diameter, to a lower gauge is a larger diameter, okay, just like a shotgun. Um, six, so 16 gauges are uh, the thick needles that are used for those thick, viscous um, medications. And they're also a good one to use as the extractor because the larger diameter simply allows you to withdraw quicker. Okay. Makes a large difference if you're extracting 450. So sub Q. Subcuteness, okay? Um, our, right, our Latin is our under the skin, okay? So our sub Q is generally just under the skin, not intramuscular, which we'll talk about, which is inside the muscle. So you're really going for that area. This is a really nice uh, visual, okay? You're really going for that area where you feel. Uh, penetration of the skin, but not yet getting into the muscly area, okay? Um, so a little pinch, right, of the area where you're going to inject really helps to kind of get a little more mass of that in between, a little more volume of that in between area, okay? When you pinch it up like that, your sub Q layer goes from that thick to that thick, right? And then it's just easier for you to um, needle in, okay? Um, what was I gonna say? I'll say it right after this. Intermuscular uh, is generally things that are gonna be going on with ewes, rarely giving intermuscular injections to lambs. Generally those will be um, all sub Q. So intermuscular is in inside the muscle. It's really getting in there and it's really gonna stay there, okay? Um, you wanna be a little careful with intermuscular because with those deals, just since you're going in deeper, you have a, uh, a, a larger danger of breaking, right? Breaking the needle uh, since it kind of hurts a little bit more. They're gonna jump a little bit more. So be a little careful with, uh, with intermuscular injections. Um, a quick note here, right? Um, none of these things are mysteries or things that you'll have to look up. If you get a vaccine, right, it'll say intermuscular and where, or sub Q and where if necessary, right? Intermuscular is generally up, generally up around the shoulder area, um, right? And sub Q is generally around the neck area, around the back or sides. Right, but specific um, specific injections have specific instructions on how to administer. Also, dosing. Okay, um, right. Read read the read the instruction booklets. It's they're they're real. They actually give you the real instructions you need in terms of dosage based on body weight. Right, dose per gram per kilogram body weight or what have you. Uh, volume per body weight, etc. Um, and exactly where and how and when. Um, to do it. Intraperitoneal, oh God, uh, another cup of coffee, please. Uh, IP injection is in the abdominal cavity, right, of weak lambs that need a glucose uh, solution. So a lot of times it's, it's a, a kind of a last resort deal, right, to give an IP injection. Um, and it's feeling for that cavity can be a little bit of a trick, right? And since we're getting into some organ areas, we're gonna to wanna to be a little more careful with that as opposed to the sub Q or the intermuscular where at, you know, the worst case scenario is we're gonna have a broken needle. That we'll probably be able to 
get retrieved back again after it breaks. Um, uh, IP is for lambs that have, um, need a quick boost, right? Energy a lot of times it could be from parasites, it can be from not getting adequate nutrition at birth, right? And on to prolapse is next. I will cut this video in an effort to keep them semi-short. 10 minutes, all right. Um, I'll also put this up with a discussion board. Mahalo, you guys.